on Seattle Refined. Get out of the way! Three teens, one mom, adds up to one cramped, decrepit bathroom. It's a refined makeover you got a see to believe. Oh my god. Plus, inside the pea plant. The foam is just really a combination of the pea juice, of the water. A fascinating journey from the farm to the can to your dinner table. Then... The story is just riveting. And the first line is amazing. If you haven't picked up Refine's March Book Club pick yet, what are you waiting for? We're going to show you what the cool kids are reading. And an old chapel that's pumping out some of Hollywood's biggest hits. Seattle Refine starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refine. I'm Gard Swanson coming to you today from Honor Coffee. It's a moment months in the making here on Refined. We're finally revealing one of the coolest makeovers we've ever helped pull off. A few months back, Refined put out a call asking to see your bathroom disasters in need of a major transformation. Viewers flooded us with photos of some pretty desperate situations. But thanks to our sponsors at Bathfitter Northwest, Refined found a mom who was ready to turn her bathroom from drab to fab. Can I have the bathroom now? No. no. Please hurry up. No. Peggy and her three teens have a bathroom dilemma. The small space they share needs a serious upgrade. I don't really have the means at this time to, to do it for myself. I don't like the shower area in particular. It's dirty looking even when it's been cleaned. It's super small, so it makes it a challenge when more than one of us tries to get in there to get ready. Matt, get out of the way. Oh my god! Stop! Anna takes long showers. Don't so me. do you. Yeah, I like 10 minute showers. It's like I don't like being showers. single out right now, so. <laughs> I feel like the bathtub, like we don't really take baths or anything, so it's kind of a waste of space. We totally get it. The kids haven't used a tub since they were in diapers, and Peggy needs some peace of mind. So when she reached out to Refined, we knew just who to turn to. Hi there. Hi. You must be Peggy? Yeah. Peggy, hey. I'm Trey with Bathfitter. It's nice to meet you. Oh, very Come nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Tell me what you'd like to see happen in here. Uh, I'd like to get rid of the bathtub. I, I feel like a shower would be better suited for our family needs at this time. I would love it if there was a way to get rid of the gray uh, paneling here. It's very dingy and I get depressed every time I'm in here. Okay. So yeah, I think we've got a pretty good idea of what maybe to uh, present for some options for you. Wonderful. Okay. I'm excited. Great. And these are just some before and after pictures of some projects that we've done. Wow. We back our product with a lifetime warranty. Trey is informative and he's courteous and obviously knowledgeable. Um, he made it really easy. The other option that we have would be doing something where we have multiple functions. This is going to be a white marble. The pearl is also a high gloss. Okay, so that's all of them. Have you decided? I really like the uh, subway top. Okay, okay. I honestly can't believe this is happening. Um, uh, and I just, so far the experience has been wonderful and I'm, I'm thrilled. I think it went well. I'm actually really excited for Peggy. Uh, I think she's got a perfect basketer candidate bathroom. I'll order all the product for her project. There's gonna be about a three to five week turnaround to get that back to us. She is not even gonna recognize this bathroom. So today's the day. Uh, we've waited a couple weeks here. We've, we had all the uh, product manufactured at our facilities. Everything was custom ordered for Peggy's project. So uh, we checked it in and everything looks good. I think Peggy will be happy with the finished result. It's kind of a weird, surreal feeling to hear the bathtub being broken up into pieces, but um, can't wait. Okay, Peggy, here we are. So three weeks ago, we sat out in your living room and designed your new bath. Yep. So today's the day you get to see what it looks like, okay? Yeah. You ready? Yes, yes. All right, let's check it out. Peggy, mm -hmm. here it is. Oh my God, it is completely different. It doesn't look like my house, you know, it looks like a hotel. I feel like I'm going into a hotel and I'm going to be pampered and, you know, I'm on vacation. This is incredible. You like the countertop? Um, yeah. Okay, oh, great. I love Plumped it. it uh, Plum Fit did a great job of getting that set up for you. Right. So does this look like what we designed? It 
It looks better than what we designed. Yeah, yep. uh, I can tell that uh, she was excited to see the new bath, and it is a big change in here. So hopefully this is something that helps her and the, the family out, and it's something that they can use for years to come. So perfect. Awesome. It's so big. I uh, definitely like the marble countertop. We call this another refined makeover success. Not only does Peggy have a new bathroom, Ooh. Bath Fitter has a new fan for life. I would never have considered them because I don't know why this is such a great alternative and it's just turned out so nicely and it was so easy it was kind of just like snapping your fingers and you have a brand new bathroom everyone was so helpful so professional um, it, it happened in just a couple of days it, it, it just was great it was just a great experience from start to finish it's a miracle it's unbelievable to learn more about bath fitter Northwest head to seattlerefine.com now to one of our favorite days on Refined. We're diving deep into our next book club pick called Swimming Lessons. As always, you can be a part of the Refined Book Club and our weekly updates. And this latest book already has us hooked. Hey guys, I'm Britt Thorson, Managing Editor of SeattleRefined.com. Quick refresh, if you haven't already started reading Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller, you should. It is our March book club pick. It's about a woman who leaves notes for her husband in the books he collects, but these aren't love letters. These are notes about what their marriage has actually become, and after she writes the last note, she disappears. Now, if you're reading along with us, you should already be about a fourth of the way through the book, and this is about the time when I start to think about which characters I like the most and which I'm connecting with. We talked to some people who connected the most with Flora, the youngest daughter. I myself connected the most with Ingrid, the mom. I think my favorite character in the book is the youngest daughter, Flora. Why? A lot of it is told from her perspective, um, and she's a bit of a heartbreak. It's it's a bit heartbreaking told from her perspective, but she's also a trooper, and um, they all come out, she comes out okay in the end, with an understanding of, of herself, um, and a, she grows, and I love that about her. Definitely Flora. <laughs> um, she's a younger daughter, she's about 20, she's an art student, and she's the one who I feel is kind of most attached to her mother, to Ingrid, but she's, she's also, I kind of feel like I could hang out with Flora, but also some ways in Ingrid. I can see myself, which not quite myself if you start reading this book, in Ingrid as a young student in college, as a young literature student and looking up and kind of to this liter literature professor. It's proving to be quite the mystery, which is personally my favorite kind of book. Read along with us. We're hoping to be to chapter 27 by next Wednesday. Let us know if you want to be a part of Seattle Refined's book club. Email us at hello at seattlerefined.com or reach us on our Facebook page or Twitter. Our latest book club pick isn't the only read that we are into right now. Seattlerefined.com listed the top books that are perfect to curl up and read during the winter. Winter doesn't officially end until next week, so we had to squeeze this in one last time. To check it out, head to our website and search books. Seattle Refined is just getting started. More peas, please. So that is a lot of peas. How many cans are gonna go through this plant in a given day? If you love to see how things are made, don't miss our VIP tour of Washington's prolific pea plant. Plus, it's the future of modern living. Another piece is this table um, that does double duty. Refine goes state-of-the-art furniture shopping and finds some of the coolest stuff around. <laughs> Welcome back to Refined, I'm Guard Swanson. Well, bigger is not always better in downtown Seattle. Small space living is the wave of the future in one of the fastest growing cities in the country. And thanks to our sponsors at Alchemy Collections, Refined shows you the smart way to live small and stylish in today's urban evolution. Wait and configure it. Definitely smaller. It's a sign of the times. More and more people are leaving suburbia for smaller condos in downtown Seattle. But just because you limit space doesn't mean you limit comfort. This piece. We joined interior designers from Weber Thompson at one of the top furniture stores in downtown Seattle, Alchemy Collections. Places like Alchemy um, showrooms, furniture showrooms downtown tend to carry smaller pieces um, that are very fitting for apartment living. Things to look for when you're looking for furniture in small urban condominiums and apartments. Uh, think about storage and flexibility. 
and multifunction and um, you will really can maximize the space. We are huge fans of sectionals and one is that it provides a lot of seating um, in, in one piece and it doesn't visually or spatially take up a lot of um, space within the room. Another piece that we like is this C table, we call them C tables. What's nice is that it acts as a side table but you can get it tight against your sofa and it doesn't take up a lot of floor space. Another piece is this table um, that does double duty if you don't have a dining space. This is your coffee table and dining space. In. Another piece that we are really excited about is this ottoman slash side table slash storage. It's pretty small. You can use it as a side table because it's got this hardwood top. You can also use it as seating. And then over here, this lid lifts up for storage. To see what these ladies can really do, the Weber Thompson team showed us one of their biggest projects right now, the new high-tech high-rise Nexus. Here we are at the Nexus showroom. Um, as you can see, uh, we've selected a similar style couch as uh, the one that we looked at back at the showroom at Alchemy, and it's an L shape. And we do like this because of its size and scale, and it has a low back. As you can see here, we've also picked a low profile furniture. The bed especially, it's the largest piece in here, but it doesn't take up very much visual space. How cool is this? One of the lead designers says Nexus has truly been a passion project. These condos are very different than ones I've seen that we've even worked on at our firm in the sense of the space planning is very, very efficient. We took advantage of every inch of space, whether it's from ceiling heights to the actual layout of the spaces, how we have concealed appliances, we've concealed different features. It's, it's like a little secret world and you discover all these hidden technological aspects. It's not really about downsizing, it's how you're using your space. As I look around this beautiful two bedroom condominium, I'm inspired by a lot of the ways we're going to live in the future. There's been a lot of thought put into these floor plans, truly ergonomic use of space, what we need to live, how we choose to live. Are you ready for downtown living? Take Refine's Where Should You Live personality quiz to find out at seattlerefine.com slash nexus. When you take the quiz, you'll be entered into our Urban Evolution giveaway. The grand prize is an electric bike from Rad Power Bikes, a $500 gift card to Alchemy Collections, Seattle's go-to for modern and affordable furnishings, plus $200 to Daniel's Broiler. Again, head to seattlerefine.com slash nexus for a chance to win. Seattle Refine will be right back. But first, our Urban Evolution Question of the Day, brought to you by our sponsor, Realogic's Sotheby's International Realty. So I own my condo, but I really, really need to upgrade. Any advice? That's a great question. You know, a lot of my condo owners are looking at how to move up in this market. They look at what inventory is out there. They don't see what they're looking for. In fact, in downtown and in Belltown this week, only nine new listings came on. And those are likely to sell in a week with multiple offers. It's a very stressful and competitive environment out there. So I'm talking to my people about the opportunity with a new construction project, Nexus Condominiums. It's the only new construction building there is in Seattle. And when you go to new construction rather than a resale, you have the option of choosing a floor plan, looking at um, beds and baths, and even choosing some finishes. And it kind of takes that hurry up um, attitude away from buying uh, your new home. Welcome back to Refined. We all know the saying, two peas in a pod. Well, in a small eastern Washington town called Toppenish, there's a lot more than that. It's home to one of the most popular food brands in the world. We're talking about Del Monte Peas. Washington's grown's Thomas Guzman went to go check it out. I know we're going to see peas, but what other products does Del Monte deal with here at this particular plant? Uh, we do peas, corn, cream corn, uh, and carrots. That smells so good. If you think of peas, this smells like just so much better. Freshness is one of the things that's key about the uh, crops that we have here. From harvest to the time that you can, you're probably looking 
somewhere between three to 10 hours. So that's how fresh can, canned food is. Well, let's yeah. see where these peas are gonna take okay. us now. So here's where it all happens, right? Right on. So yeah. What's the very first process? Uh, the first process is we're gonna blow anything that's light out. Really, it's a cleaning process. What you're looking at right now, its primary function is to make sure that there are no rocks in the peas. What we're trying to do at this particular unit is we're floating out light shells. You'll see on the screen, these are all pieces of pea. It's just shell. You don't want that in the can. The foam is just really a combination of the pea juice, of the water, the agitation. We test every load of peas for a tenderometer reading. Excellent. All right, there you go. Tenderometer, right here. One of the next things we'll be looking at is the uh, vision sorter that's a can color sort and pull out blooms and so on. The blue light is an ultraviolet light, and what it does is it actually makes the pea luminesce, and so that's how the sorter actually uh, removes those defects. Next, the peas are ready to be canned before heading off to the cooker. In the cooking area, the canned peas go through large steam cookers. The cooking process makes the peas completely safe, and now they're ready for labeling and one final inspection. Kathleen, I'm noticing x-ray. What's that all about? Well, this is actually fairly new technology that we put in, in a, uh, well, within the last five years. There's a lot of equipment here. If a bolt dropped into a can, um, all that will be rejected at this machine. So it's that final check to make sure what you're getting is a can of peas and, and just a can of peas. So that is a lot of peas. How many cans are gonna go through this plant in a given day? About 1.3 million. Million? Of peas, yeah. In corn, we're probably reaching more like 2 million. Wow. Well, how does that make you feel knowing that you're providing that much product to consumers? Actually, I'm really proud of this facility. And in being in Toppenish, we put out a lot of food for the U.S. and a real, very safe product, a good product. And uh, it's hard to believe it's happening in a little town in Toppenish, but there's a lot going on here. Well, Kathleen, thank you so much for showing me around the plant. I learned so much about peas today. It's a pleasure. Like <laughs> and, can. Well, you know, 1.3 million cans going out every day. Uh, you know, thank you so much for making sure that they're safe and, most importantly, that they taste so good. Oh, yeah. Tune in to Seattle Refined every Wednesday for more stories from our partners at Washington Ground. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. Well, your mom probably told you at least once in your lifetime, don't judge a book by its cover. And that may be true of buildings, too. Refined discovered an old chapel that is definitely not what it appears to be. At the corner of 900 West and 100 South in Salt Lake, it's an old historic church house that's been here for more than a hundred years. The last place you'd ever think to hear. This kind of music ringing through the hallways. Inside this old looking chapel, there is a state of the art recording studio. But it's not just any kind of music they are pumping out of here. This is music that's being heard across the world. In movie theaters. Commercials. Uh, the official name is Warner Chapel Production Music. Brian Hoffines is a chief executive producer of this music production company that's been here for 30 years. So our library, which is the third largest in the world, is music that we actually conceptualize and produce on our own, and we own it, and then we put it out there uh, through a search engine. With some 900 music tracks coming out of here a year, recordings are happening all the time. And that's why it seems so odd. This old church house on the west side of Salt Lake would be the powerhouse of music beds across the world. We hear our music and I'm thinking, wow, that works perfectly. But it's always gratifying to hear it and know that people appreciate what we do. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Many thanks to Honor Coffee. We'll see you next time right here on Seattle Refine.